Good evening. Um, I'm Elizabeth Hansen, and this is Keto Confab. We are a group of people trying to support each other in the keto lifestyle, specifically according to the teachings of Dr. Annette Bosworth. And um, we're here every Wednesday, and anybody is welcome from veterans to newbies. And this year, 2023, we are going to start our year by working through Dr. Bosworth's workbook the Keto Continuum Workbook. Um, this is my workbook. Um, I've cut it apart and put it into a three ring binder because it's just easier for me to use um, that way. And um, I, Dr. Bosworth has written two books and one workbook. And I find that the workbook is the most complete way for people to understand exactly how to do the keto lifestyle um, easiest, best, healthiest. Now there are individual things that we all have to work out for ourselves. Uh, this is my husband who is not here this evening. Oh, here he comes talking about him and he's coming in. Um, he, uh, a lot of times people do the keto diet to lose weight specifically. Um, or to help with other health issues, but my husband isn't overweight and he doesn't really have any health issues. Um, and, but he wanted to be healthy and continue to be healthy uh, through as he goes on in life. So he decided to join me in keto. And so there are individual things. I eat fewer carbs than he does. Um, and um, I don't know that he's done any fasting, um, but anyway, so we're going to- Not start, intentionally, no. Not intentionally. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start the keto um, workbook. And of course, the beginning is uh, Dr. Boz introducing herself and then why she made a workbook and- um, and then helpful tips uh, to working with the workbook. And then on page um, XV, um, she, she talks about stressing the metabolism. And then she goes in to the whole discussion about our why. And um, one of the key things Dr. Bosworth stresses is that you need a good enough reason to want to be doing the keto lifestyle to help support you through the difficult times. Um, because, you know, you go to family meetings and people are like, what, you don't eat baked potatoes, you know, or you're, you're not willing to um, eat a pizza, you know, with bread or, or have some white bread and stuff. And it just makes it easier if you firmly have thought through exactly why you're doing this, why you're going away from the norm. Um, because right now the norm is not healthy. It's, it's not good for our metabolic health to follow the food pyramid suggested by the USDA. And um, so most people will come up with reasons um, such as weight loss, and others will come up with joint pain or inflammation or brain fog, Alzheimer's, kidney disease, diabetes, and things. Um, but there are other whys, such as I want to be able to play with my grandchildren and be more flexible, or I want to sleep better at night, or I don't want to have bad breath, or um, I want to cut down on my flatulence or whatever. Um, not all of these things are necessarily medical, but they're all good whys. But make sure you find a strong why. In this whole front section of the workbook, um, she devotes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight pages of the beginning of the workbook to figuring out your why. She, she has good questions to ask yourself how to define your why, how to search out your why. And um, so it's, it's a good section to go through. Um, now, if you're watching on replay on uh, our YouTube channel, 
Um, last week, uh, the members went through and discussed their why as to why we have chosen to go with keto. Um, so you can go back and watch the January 4th episode of Keto Confab from 2023 and um, learn what we had to say about that. I think that was what we did in the whole thing last week. Now, the second thing um, that Dr. Boz discusses is building your tribe. So Julie, what do you think she means by building your tribe? Well, it's a good thing you didn't ask me that question earlier because I was on the phone with my son. Um, okay. Building your tribe is about getting around people that want to do it like you do and getting that support of like people with like minds and having a group of people to bounce ideas off of or to get some encouragement from. And it's much like your church family or your family, enter your close family, close friends, just people that believe the same way you do and want to do it together. Um, so Scott, um, so uh, does that mean that every person you include in your tribe is a person who's actually actively doing um, keto? Can you have people who aren't on keto supporting you in your tribe? Scott, you're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you? Okay. Did you, okay. Um, well, not necessarily, you know. Uh, <laughs> although I don't know, I don't, I don't know if there's a lot of people that are not keto or, or post keto who, who would actually be supportive, though, necessarily. Well, but what you're looking for are people who aren't going to try and sabotage you or be negative about what you're doing. Um, Tammy, do you have any friends or family that aren't doing keto, but yet they're supportive of your choice to do keto? Yeah, my husband um, does not do keto and he has all kinds of stuff in the house that I don't eat. He gets these little pies from Walmart. He gets these little, he, the refrigerator's full of stuff that's not keto. Um, and I choose not to eat it, even though it's sitting right there in front of my face. You know, he has M&Ms in the freezer and you know, I mean, he's got a, ice cream in the freezer because he has ice cream every day. Um, but he doesn't, I don't know that he's 100% supportive of my decision to not eat it, but he doesn't try to sabotage me. He knows what I'm going to eat and not eat. And when he makes dinner, when we're together, because, you know, he works second shift, so he's not here. Um, he, he might make something, you know, that he knows I'm not going to eat it. He'll make French fries and um, he knows I might eat one or two, you know, I mean, I'm not going to eat things and so he's he's is supportive in that you know he doesn't nag at me or you know doesn't try to sabotage my meals um but the things are in the house and I can't control that because you know he's not keto um yeah. so I, I call that supportive he's not not supportive so that's supportive <laughs> yeah um, he's not trying to make me eat things you know or try to encourage me to eat things that I, I he knows I'm not going to eat he Mm -hmm. I say your diet is your diet and mine is mine. And, and, um, you know, I mean, I don't try to make him eat keto and he doesn't try to make me eat, um, you know, yeah. stuff. So. Um, of course it would be easiest for all of us if we lived in a household where everyone in the household is doing keto and everyone in the household is knowledgeable and everyone in the household is supportive and we only went out to restaurants that were keto and over to friends' houses that were keto and talked to people at church who were also keto and everything. But that isn't life. That isn't life. But what Dr. Boz is talking about is finding a core group of people that you can talk about the ups and downs of keto, uh, discuss you know, I think I'm, I'm not getting enough to eat. I'm, I'm going to up my protein or I, I'm going to go to 25 grams of carbs instead because I, I'm just not doing well or I've hit a plateau with my weight loss and, um, and everything. So we, we have to look around um, for um, our tribe and find our tribe. Uh, we, <laughs> Scott and I... Uh, live in a small town, North Dakota, 
we haven't found too many other people who are um, actively doing keto uh, or totally understand what doing keto is. Um, we've met a number of people who are like, oh, maybe I should do that as they sip on their soda and, and eat three cookies at the Christmas dinner, um, <laughs> you know, um, but nothing comes of it, you know. And uh, so, you know, that's one reason we started this uh, support group was um, to try and help support ourselves. It was purely selfish uh, to try and help support ourselves because, you know, in our community, there aren't that many people. And so- I'm the closest one to you, probably. What? I'm the closest one to you, probably. Right. Yeah. yeah, Hannah's yeah. making noise and I need her to stop because I can hardly hear. So when, when I first, and I was in Dr. Baza's um, class when she first started the first one. And um, so I did try to, we did have a couple of people that got together and had phone calls and um, there was probably four or five that would do um, a phone call or a Zoom meeting. I can't remember how we started. And you know, as, as time went by, it dwindled down, but um, me and Michelle have been talking for you no know, almost three years and we still talk every week or most every week. Mm -hmm. And um, I do plan to go meet her this summer. <laughs> well, we've done Zoom and, and um, stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. and uh, anyway, so she's like that person, you know, that we talk to about this or that and um, all your problems and stuff. So that's kind of uh, interesting, you know, that we stayed connected for, uh, you know, many years. Yeah. And when everybody else fizzled out. <laughs> I mean, this stuff goes up and down in everybody's life. We all come across stressors. Um, there's a death in the family. We have to go to a funeral and there's all this food at the funeral. Or, um, you know, we have to go on a long trip and we're stuck in a hotel with only hotel food, you know, or restaurant food. Um, there, there's a lot of things, you know, to up and down through our lives, but finding a core group of people or at least one person um, to be able to say, you know, I don't know how to navigate this. You know, I'm not sure what to do. I'm, I'm stuck at a weight plateau. I'm not getting anywhere or uh, I'm just tired of going, fighting uphill, you know. Um, or when you fall off the wagon, encourage yeah. you to, you know, get back on and, you mm -hmm. know, because both of us have gone, you know, up and down and not done well during the time period or holidays or stuff like that and then mm -hmm. you got to kind of restart which is what we're both doing for sure right now so yeah and um here we are we're at the beginning of a new year uh it's a lot of a lot of times people think about restarting and uh, recommitting and everything and that's why we're starting with the workbook again mm -hmm. and um trying to help ourselves really recommit to our wise and recommit to our tribe or find another tribe or find more tribes. There, there are a lot of people um, that do keto that go to three support groups a week or two or five or whatever, depending on what amount of time they have, um, because it is good to hear from other people um, what, how they've handled things and, you know, get various support throughout the week so and if somebody's thinking well just watching a replay of a video isn't going to be enough for me well i encourage you to try and find the other support groups out there maybe they don't put up a replay video um but if you could meet with one on a saturday morning or a sunday afternoon or tuesday night or thursday night or monday night i think within the uh, neurons group there's pretty much a, a meeting happening each day and each day of the week. I think we're the only ones on Wednesdays, but, um, and there are some during the day as well. So try and find your tribe. Um, then from that point, Dr. Boz goes into what kind of supplies you need when you're starting. Um, now, when I started keto two years ago, I didn't buy any of the MCT oil or the um, B, 
B, what, what's it called? BHB. BHB, because I have a lot of food sensitivities and I'm like, I don't think I could take those things. And, and um, sure enough, I can't because a lot of the BHB has stevia in it. I can't use that. And the MCT oil is coconut oil and I can't do that. Um, but a lot of people need that extra little oomph to get through the first little bit, especially the MCT oil to help them or, and the BHB to help them start producing ketones. Did any of you use any of those things when you began your keto journey, the BHB or the MCT oil? No? I did buy some eventually and try it and I, it's I, still up in the cupboard. Mm -hmm. I didn't really try it because I didn't. I tried, I did the same. You tried what? Everything. Oh, you tried everything? Did, did she say think? everything? I don't know. I think she froze. Oh no, there she's unfroze. Julie, I said I said that I I tried those things too. Okay, and did you feel they made the transition into keto easier, or did you feel more supported with them? No, no, not really. I know a number of individuals who um, are vegetarians, don't eat milk um, or don't eat meat or fish. Uh, they will eat cheeses, milk, and um, eggs. And they found that the MCT oil was one of the only ways that they could get their fat up um, enough to really start producing ketone because they weren't getting enough fat. Um, and so you know, some people may need it. Some people feel that it really supports them. But right now the consensus here among us four is eh, not so much, but they're there if you want to try them. Now, the other things that she suggests um, is um, getting the chronometer app. Um, now I have the chronometer app. I have to confess in the last five months. I haven't used it a lot. That's probably one of my reasons. I know I'm going over on my carbs. Um, I started using it again um, beginning of the year, but I'm kind of out of the habit. I really need to get back in the habit. So it hasn't been every day the last 11 days. Um, but Scott, could you talk to us about some of what you learned by using the chronometer app? Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've <laughs> been in there uh, intensively, but um, I saved a number of things from chronometer. But, you know, one thing that I've learned is that, you know, that they, people assume that uh, uh, citrus fruit has lots of vitamin C, um, but really you can get almost as much vitamin C from an ounce of broccoli as an ounce of uh, uh, citrus fruit. Um, the other thing is, you know, people believe that fruits in general are healthy, that they have lots of nutrients, uh, but actually they don't. Um, an ounce of spinach or kale uh, has much more, uh, vit much higher uh, nutrient content in vitamins and all sorts of things, vitamins and minerals, uh, than uh, pretty much any fruit that I've seen. Um, <clears throat> And so, you know, different things. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting though that the chronometer, you know, uh, can break down, uh, uh, you know, you can, you can ask, you know, how, how many nutrients are in uh, a cup of something or, or an ounce of something or, or a gram of something and, and, and it'll tell you. Also <laughs> in chronometer, um, you know, if, if people eat um, uh, at Arby's or Subway or McDonald's or something, or you can type in um, an Arby's or beef sandwich or, or a, a Subway um, turkey and vegetable sub or you know different things, and, and it'll you know it'll give you the breakdown of those specific things as well. Because uh, unfortunately, a lot of people these days actually uh, uh, don't really cook at home. <laughs> They actually 
eat fast food, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and, but, but anyway, um, you know, so, so chronometer actually does, you know, break down the nutrient value of, of, uh, you know, things like that to, you know, the, the commercially available fast food, you know, and you can see, so you can see, you know, whether or not they have many nutrients or, or, or not. And, and the other, the other day I was, I just happened to, um, well, I, I got a, an email from chronometer saying, Hey, you haven't used chronometer, uh, uh, for quite a while. And <laughs> that kind of jogged my memory. And, and, and I know I'm going to be talking with my students about this in, uh, probably next week, I suppose. Um, and, um, uh, in the general biology class anyway. And so I, I, I went into chronometer and, you know, typed in a couple of fast food things and I, you know, they, they, they give you the nutrient content of them. And by the way, the, um, the nutrient content of a, um, Turkey and veggie sub from Subway actually surprisingly has a lot of, has a pretty high nutrient content. You know, the other thing that, that you see is um, if you type in, I mean, an ounce of uh, beef or an ounce of, you know, turkey or, or, or something like that actually has a, a much higher nutrient content than pretty much any vegetable uh, or, or fruit you can you can type in you know and so and, and we've um, we've been raised on this this myth that uh, red meat I'll, I'll go I'll go for red meat specifically you know leave the turkey alone for a while but go for the beef you know that red meat is 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 so unhealthy for you it's it's got all that fat in it you know and and that cholesterol too and and it's so unhealthy for you and blah 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 and and well number one uh, we know that the fat is not, um, it, in fact, the fat is healthy for you and even the, even the cholesterol in it. And number two, you know, that they, they don't happen to mention, of course, that because that doesn't fit the narrative, uh, they don't have to mention that uh, beef is, is that it got, uh, it's very highly concentrated nutrient value, um, you know, more than pretty much any vegetable or fruit other than, I don't know, maybe spinach and kale, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> And so, you know, that's another thing that you can really see through chronometer also. Um, and, and fish, uh, you know, um, you can see the, the, the great, uh, you know, the, the, the huge uh, benefit from all the omega-3s and the selenium and stuff from fish. You know, the other thing is, if you, if you go into there, you know, um, and you look at uh, uh, fast food, you know, different things, you can see that it's just packed with sodium. Uh, and, and that's for most of us, that's a problem too. I mean, yeah, there are, there are some people who, who can actually handle sodium and that's great. But for a lot of us, uh, excess sodium is a problem. And eating way too much of that fast food uh, causes the, the sodium issues. So and anyway, you things, know, that's, that's a little bit of chronometer. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that surprised me most when I put it into chronometer, um, well, there were a couple of things. Number one, I like hot chocolate. I like hot chocolate a lot. And I would allow myself one mug of hot chocolate a day. And I never thought about the carbs or anything in my hot chocolate. But then I put it into chronometer. It's 50 carbs for that one hot chocolate. 50 carbs. It just, oh, it blew my mind. And yeah couldn't do hot chocolate after that. And the other thing that surprised me about, um, sorry, um, the other thing that surprised me when I put it into chronometer was how much of the B vitamins were in the steak I was eating. I, I had been convinced that B vitamins were only available in, in um, grains, you know, that you had to have grains to get the B vitamins. And I'm like, what? You get, you get B vitamins from meat and potassium. I didn't know that steak had potassium, but it does. And so chronometer is definitely worth downloading to your phone or to your computer. Um, I have the whole app where I pay um, 30 or $40 a year for it. 
um, because I like to build recipes um, yeah. because I make some casseroles and I've modified them to be keto to feed our 29 year old autistic daughter so that she could lose weight as well. And um, so I like that ability uh, to do that. But other than that, um, Scott doesn't have the full app, um, but he manages with it and everything. Yeah, you know, even with the, the, the free subscription, you know, you can, I mean, you have the ability to type in any food and see what the, you know, what the uh, nutrient value is. And so, you know, and, and the other thing is, I mean, you know, if, with, with most people, I mean, the, their, their diet doesn't vary that much, you know, and so, I mean, once you've typed in all the foods you eat and, and gotten the nutritional value with them, you know, mm -hmm. there you go. The other thing is, you know, <clears throat> you can type in what you eat on a, on a, on a typical day, you know, all of the food you, you, you eat on a typical day and it'll, you know, it'll tell you then um, with, with all of that food, you know, uh, which, which vitamins you're not getting enough of and, and which ones you're getting too much of and stuff. So, it, so that's nice as well, you know. So you can, you can type in all the foods you eat in one meal or all the foods you eat in one day and, and it'll give you the stats for that. And I, I like how you can use the app on your phone to scan the barcode on packages and, and get you know, the data. And I like how it, it saves frequent foods that you put in like, I don't have to retype eggs cooked, you know, it, it saves them for me. Um, it saves it for me. So anyway, I think for tonight we'll end at the chronometer app and um, we'll pick up again um, about measurements. Uh, that's on page 20 of the workbook. And uh, if you're new and you're wanting to get this workbook, it's available on amazon.com. I believe it's also available on barnesandnoble.com. I don't, I haven't seen it like in Walmart or Target on the shelf, uh, but it's again called Keto Continuum Workbook. Keto, there's a shine on it. Keto Continuum Workbook by Dr. Annette Bosworth. I will put um, a link to it in uh, the description of this video. And um, is there anything else anybody wants to say um, before we stop our recording here? And I'm sorry, the cat's in, in the way. <laughs> Cat um, eggs have on. a lot of B, B vitamin. Pardon? Uh, eggs have a lot of B vitamin as well. Yeah, the eggs have a lot of B vitamin, a lot of albumin, which is good um, for keeping your fluid levels good. Um, eggs are eggs are should be considered the superfood. Yeah, because you it, everything in it that you need. It's a complete food. Eggs are. I, mean, I get tired of them, and they're kind of expensive now. It's like buying a diamond ring, but that's why I have chickens. <laughs> We all need to get chickens. Let's all get us some chickens. See what your city says. You could maybe have three hens. That'd give you enough chicken or eggs for the day. Yeah. Um, anything else we should say about our why um, and about you know supplements and our tribe and stuff before we end for tonight? Well, I think I think that everybody needs to realize that sometimes you need to you get low on electrolytes because your body tends to flush them out easier mm -hmm. so if you're feeling a little bit like lightheaded or something it could be that you're low on some electrolytes one of them mainly would be salt uh i'm not talking sodium like what they process foods with i'm talking like pink himalayan salt or real salt something that has some value to it mm -hmm. um that can make you feel kind of icky if you get low on your electrolytes. Yeah, I think next week we will cover magnesium and sodium and water intake and potassium and icky feelings and, and stuff like that. I think that's in the next section. Um, I don't think it was gone over in this section. So, all right, well, 
um, thanks for the discussion, everybody. And um, I'm going to end the recording here and we'll see you next week and where we'll carry on with the workbook and carry on carrying on. Um, and I'll say good night. Good night. Bye, safely.